Let's dive far into the past, just over 13.8 billion years, back to just after the Big Bang gave birth to our universe. What was it like during this very early time of expansion when the universe began to grow? We're going to take a closer look at what the cosmos was like in the few billion years directly following the Big Bang. While the name may suggest otherwise, the Big Bang was not an explosion in space that gave birth to our universe. When the Big Bang occurred, space appeared everywhere in the universe all at once, and the entire cosmos began to expand at incredible rates. Models show that in something like the first hundredth of a billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second, the universe doubled at least 90 times, and an almost impossible growth rate. During this extremely early time in the universe, in the very first few seconds and minutes, the physical laws that we use to understand and describe our universe break down. These laws and equations don't work when trying to describe what is happening in our universe, and they continue to break until the universe grows enough to cool down and become less dense. Ever since the Big Bang has been seen with the cosmic microwave background, physicists have been trying to understand the whys and hows of this event and how it initially started. For the time being, what happened in the very beginning will remain a mystery. However, the James Webb Space Telescope has already turned its gaze back in time towards the Big Bang and has picked up some new information about the very first galaxies that formed within the first billion years of the universe, which is a great step in learning about the birth of the universe. But the first galaxy didn't form until at least a few hundred million years after the Big Bang occurred. So what was it like before then? When the universe began, it was not empty. In fact, there was a massive struggle between two big players in the early universe, matter and antimatter. These two are nearly identical forms of matter, but with opposite charge of each other, and when they interact with each other, they are annihilated entirely in a burst of light and energy. But luckily for us, there was slightly more matter than antimatter created during the Big Bang, which allowed the universe to be populated with everything that we see. The question concerning why this asymmetry existed in the beginning are actively being looked at, but the answer as to why our universe is like this continues to elude researchers. Even CERN is attempting to use its massive particle collider to study antimatter, hoping to uncover its mysteries and perhaps find an answer to why our universe was eventually dominated by matter. After matter gained the upper hand, the universe was a very dark place with no stars, no galaxies, just a hot particle soup swirling with protons, neutrons and electrons. Eventually, as the cosmos continued to grow, it cooled enough that protons and neutrons began to combine and form the very first ionized atoms of hydrogen and deuterium, which then fused to form helium. The universe was so hot that it was essentially too hot for light to shine, as it would bounce off all of the free particles swirling about in a thick, opaque cloud of fog-like plasma. Once the universe was around 240 to 300,000 years old, it turned from opaque to transparent, and the last free electrons were bound to protons phase that is referred to as recombination. This time also marks the point that the cosmic microwave background allows us to see what the cosmos was like at this point in history. After the universe became transparent, it was still incredibly dark. In fact, this period of the universe's life is known as the cosmic dark ages that would last until the first stars formed. During all this time, gravity continued to play its role in the cosmos, and this force began to draw in and clump atoms together. This process continued until these clumps became dense and heavy enough that the gravitational force it generated caused the atoms within its core to fuse together, igniting the universe's fusion reactors. As the first stars began to come to life, the cosmos lit up and shone in all its glory for the very first time. And according to the currently accepted models of the cosmos, these early stars were special. For one, they were quite big, somewhere between 30 and 300 times larger than our sun and roughly a million times as bright. This doesn't put them even close to the most massive stars ever found, but they served as an extremely important role. 
Their brightness and size meant that these stars burned hot and fast, most only living for an estimated few million years as they generated elements beyond helium all the way up to iron, which marked the beginning of the end for these massive stars. Once these stars reached the end of their lives, they exploded in supernovae, creating heavier elements and filling the universe with them. New data is showing that these early stars may have collapsed in on themselves after their supernova leading to the creation of the universe's first black holes. Could these black holes have grown more massive over the eons and helped in the formation of the first galaxies to populate the cosmos? When astronomers look out at the hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe, nearly all of them have a supermassive black hole at their centers. Where these black holes come from, and even how supermassive black holes are formed, remains an unanswered question. Could these first stars and the black holes they likely created help answer these questions? The James Webb Space Telescope has just been used in a study regarding these very first galaxies. Astrophysicists out of the Rochester Institute of Technology have examined around 850 galaxies using Webb's specialized high-sensitivity infrared camera. The galaxies they looked at were thought to date between 11 and a half and 13 billion years in the past. They have already begun to uncover previously unknown information about these early galaxies. For one, they took a very long time to develop their shape many of them look like a sombrero galaxy with thin outer reaches and a bulging center. These completely went against what astronomers previously believed that the early galaxies were rarely formed disks. Turns out no piece of technology before Webb could detect the dim light emanating from them. But this team is not the only one looking to learn more about the first galaxies of the universe. Another team of astronomers are using JWST's near-infrared spectrograph to understand more about these. The spectrograph measures light's intensity over a range of different wavelengths, allowing researchers to see much more than what our eyes could normally pick up. Using the most advanced technology available, this team was able to detect three separate objects, dating to just around 700 million years after the Big Bang. The researchers have said that the objects they found resemble small, fuzzy green pea galaxies that are among the very first spectra from the dawn of the universe. Based on the information gathered, the team's research suggests that at the time of the universe's history, galaxies like this were probably fairly common as the first stellar nurseries kicked off. The universe continued to expand and go through many changes as a countless number of stars were born, burned and died. All of this led to the construction of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, the formation of our Sun and Solar System, the birth planet we call home, and eventually to the emergence of our species, who took to the stars and asked questions designed to bring us closer to understanding how the universe came into being and why all of this happened the way it did. Thanks for watching. Have you heard any theories of what happened to the very beginning of our universe that you find compelling? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, see you next time on Matter.